Um, yeah, thank you for uh, uh, having me again uh, here at this uh, seminar. It's a pleasure to uh, to speak. And um, today I'm going to speak on something completely different than I did last time. Uh, and that is on uh, the work um, I did with uh, yeah quite a number of co-workers uh, in the past um, on simulation of water quality in, uh, in sewers. And actually this work started... Um, I think about 10, 12 years ago, uh, when I was still working in KWR in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's where I will uh, will pick up uh, the work. Uh, let me first start sharing my screen. And you should be able to see that now. Is that correct? Good. Um, so yeah, this... Um, um, part of the work I'm showing here today is also uh, conducted uh, based on um, yeah, some, some tools uh, and some collaborations we have within uh, the, the water share community, uh, where uh, also Exeter is a partner in, uh, I believe. Um, and um, yeah, I think, uh, of course, this is done uh, within the framework of the, uh, the GW4 Water Security uh, Alliance. Um, just go here. Um, so yeah, what are we talking about if we talk about sewers? Um, in, in the UK, um, it's typically something like uh, transporting wastewater for about 11 billion liters per day uh, through, uh, through these uh, sewer mains. And if you would put all these sewer mains in one line, uh, it would uh, uh, have a total length of, uh, well, almost 570,000 uh, kilometers of, uh, of conduits. And actually that brings us uh, in the distance uh, 1.5 times beyond the distance to the moon. So um, quite a number of pipes and um, an immense uh, amount of money in terms of, uh, of assets which are buried uh, underground. Um, and typically uh, when we look at uh, sewers, um, the sewers are coming from uh, houses. That's where the drains are. This is what we call a drain. That's uh, normally the, the, the private part of the uh, of the sewer. Uh, it's connected uh, to uh, a lateral and the lateral is then connected to uh, the sewer in the street which collects all the wastewater. And you see a typical example of a sewer like this. Uh, it's uh, just a pipe. It's open surface flow. Uh, normally uh, using gravity to, uh, to, to transport uh, the water uh, because there is a gradient in this pipe, a uh, horizontal uh, gradient or um, uh, the pipe is, is inclined uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the ground so that the water keeps uh, moving. Now, what do we find uh, in, these, uh, in these pipes? Um, yeah, there's a lot of things uh, you can find in the sewer. Um, uh, uh, things from suspended solids, and that goes from very small to very large uh, parts. Um, and um, yeah, there's also things like dissolved uh, materials, like, like uh, COD, uh, so uh, chemical oxygen demand, or organic material, so to say. Nitrogen, phosphorus you can find, uh, but also all kinds of pathogens and microorganisms, of course. And then... Um, yeah, uh, we often see things what we call fork or fat, oil and grease, uh, which are coming from kitchens, for instance, uh, people dropping in uh, oil and, and, uh, and grease uh, rest from, from cooking, uh, things like that. Um, paper, toilet paper we find, wipes uh, often, which shouldn't be there, but uh, uh, still a lot of people throw in their loose. Um, but also, if we have a, a, a combined uh, sewer, there can be street runoff, there can be all kinds of illegal discharges, uh, and um, yeah, maybe not a real water quality parameter in the sense of a constituent of the water, but uh, temperature is also often a very important aspect in, uh, in sewers. And then, last but not least, yeah, a lot of these uh, uh, beasts are in, uh, in the sewers. Um, so, yeah. Um, and... Um, the question is, why is this important? Because for a long time, we were not bothered about what is actually going on in these uh, sewers. They are uh, a kind of a conveyor belt uh, for our waste uh, out of the city, bringing it to a wastewater treatment plant. And we are not interested actually in what is going on there. And actually, I think we should. And um, it is becoming more and more important uh, for us to understand what is going on in the, in the sewer. Uh, you see some typical examples here in the news. I think they're all from The Guardian. 
uh, but what you see uh, uh, re recently that was in the news about uh, uh, the, the raw sewage uh, um, spills uh, in, into the rivers, uh, which uh, didn't make it in the end into a legal uh, obligation for water utilities in the, in the environment bill. Um, it often comes in the news that we have these big fat bergs uh, in, uh, uh, in, in our sewers and that workers have to go in to, uh, to remove uh, uh, over a ton of uh, fat and, uh, and, and wet wipes and, and all mashed together in, into big clumps of, uh, of, of yeah, dirt, uh, basically. Um, but also, um, yeah, there is, uh, as already said, temperature, and that means that we can do heat uh, recovery, and you see that more and more. It, uh, it started uh, uh, in, um, in Switzerland, it went over from Switzerland to, uh, to Germany, in the Netherlands they're looking at it, and also now in the UK, uh, heat recovery is something which is on the, uh, on the agenda. And then finally, things like, um, yeah, you can use the sewer also to track uh, actually what people are doing. You can use it for uh, things like um, uh, uh, tracking uh, the use of uh, drugs of abuse, uh, but you can also use um, monitoring of the sewers or the sewer effluent, I should say, the, the sewer uh, 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 or the influent to, to wastewater treatment plants to actually see how um, the, the, the public health in the city is, uh, is working. So you can use it as a surveillance uh, way, method for or, um, yeah, looking at the public health in, uh, in, in the catchment area. So yes, it is important and we should understand what is actually going on. And the question is then, what can we expect if we look at the sewer system? And um, yeah, the, we have to uh, to look at, um, and I, I think it will show you a number of these things uh, will come back in, 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 the, in the presentation. Um, what you will see on the household level is that there are strong variations, uh, strong dynamics in, uh, in flows in loads of uh, uh, the, uh, the pollutants but also uh, strongly varying temperatures, depending on which tap in the house you're opening, of course. Um, and yeah, if you then take all these patterns, use patterns if, of flats and, and uh, terrace houses and all uh, also commercial buildings uh, in, in the city together, you get uh, a, di uh, a diurnal pattern uh, of, uh, of water, uh, water use and water discharge in, uh, in uh, sewer mains. Um, and that creates daily patterns that creates uh, and it depends on uh, occupancy of, uh, of houses, of course, and uh, yeah, also the way people live in the end. Uh, so what is the behavior of people uh, when they are at home? When are they working? All these uh, effects are important. And then finally, um, yeah, also important uh, seasonal effects uh, can, can take place. Now, if we look at sewers, we have to distinguish basically two uh, systems. There, there are more, but uh, the, the Two key systems to uh, to look at are um, the mixed uh, systems where all uh, wastewater from a house, from all the appliances in the house, are uh, discharged into uh, into the main. And in the same uh, uh, sewer mains, uh, we also discharge uh, the the roof uh, uh, drains um, and uh, also street uh, drains uh, will uh, drain into this uh, big uh, uh, sewer here in the street. So it collects all the wastewater uh, from around uh, the house, from in the house and around the house. And more modern systems, uh, they use uh, what we call a separated system where we have a foul sewer which collects all the wastewater from within the house. Uh, so all the appliances, toilets, washing machines, etc., baths, they will go into one uh, uh, sewer um, uh, conduit and the, uh, the rainwater and uh, uh, the, the roof uh, top water and, and street uh, will discharge into a separate uh, uh, rainwater uh, sewer. And um, yeah, I think in this case, um, uh, what we are looking at in, 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 in the lecture here today will be, well, we, we cannot distinguish between the two, but what we are looking at is mainly uh, the foul sewer or uh, a mixed sewer in dry weather uh, conditions. So there's no uh, rainwater involved uh, in, uh, in the calculations I will show you in the next uh, slides. So the modeling approach we use, um, yeah, it, it, it contains four steps uh, we take. And with the models, uh, we try to predict the flow in the, the, uh, in the sewers. We try to predict uh, the, the, uh, 
the pollutant loads. And of course, when we have pollutant loads and if we have uh, the, the flow rates, we can also uh, calculate, of course, concentrations uh, in, uh, in the sewer system. Um, and yeah, the way we do it is that we start with uh, looking at the water demand at our home. Uh, so the water use actually in, in homes, that's the basis where uh, the water is coming from. So we predict, uh, we have a model which we will use, uh, which is called SimDiem, um, which predicts uh, the, the water use in the house for the different appliances and taps and uh, all, all, all individual uh, users of the house can be uh, predicted or simulated with this uh, SimDiem model. Then we use a module which we call SimDiem uh, WW, which stands for wastewater, which actually translates these water use uh, patterns. And so this gives uh, a pattern for 24 hours of the different taps, as we will show you. Uh, we take these patterns, they go through this uh, post-processing uh, system, uh, which is uh, SimDiem wastewater, and that will translate um, the, uh, the water demand into a discharge and it will add water quality data to the, to the discharge. And the water quality data can vary from uh, per appliance. So a toilet can have a different water quality than uh, a kitchen tap or uh, a shower yeah? because um, they are uh, all used in a different, the water is used in a different way, which means that also the composition of the, the discharge of the uh, will, will be different uh, there. Um, and yeah, the translation here depends, for instance, on uh, a time difference. Eh? For, for instance, uh, when you use the water uh, in a washing machine, the washing machine fills, it goes through a washing cycle and it discharges maybe 20 minutes later than uh, the water was taken in from, uh, from the mains. So, um, that type of uh, uh, time difference uh, is included in the, in the calculation as well. And the same as, for instance, for a toilet, you flush a toilet, um, it, uh, it discharges into the sewer, and it uh, immediately after the flush, it will um, uh, uh, fill uh, the, the reservoir again, um, but it takes perhaps two hours until the next person will use the toilet. And uh, so that filling of the reservoir until the next discharge is also included in, uh, in, in the whole system. And once we have done this, this will develop again uh, a time series a pattern uh, of, uh, of discharges. Um, we can use these uh, discharges to feed into uh, a normal hydraulic uh, sewer model, uh, which also can uh, calculate uh, uh, water quality. And for these sewer models, there are a number of options available, um, going from uh, uh, commercial packages like uh, Infoworks or uh, in the Netherlands, uh, municipalities often use SOBAC, which is a program uh, developed by uh, Deltaris uh, in the past. Um, but they also could use a program, uh, open source uh, program from the, the US uh, EPA, uh, which is called SWIM. Um, and there are a number of different other of these uh, packages. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, for instance, from uh, Denmark, uh, DHI in Denmark, uh, is, is another one uh, which uh, could be used. Um, so let's first start to look at SimDiem. SimDiem is a model uh, which is uh, developed, uh, I think, 15 years ago um, by Mirjam Blocker uh, in, at KWR, and it is available through uh, the Watershare uh, uh, suite. And uh, uh, Watershare um, hosts a number of, uh, of tools, uh, and SimDiem is, uh, is one of them. Now, what this model does, it, it takes for all of the appliances in the house, you can uh, use uh, what we call uh, probability functions. Uh, for instance, um, a probability function you see here is for uh, the duration of a shower, a person taking a shower. Well, uh, you can see with, the, uh, with this probability uh, function how long on average or uh, a typical uh, showers uh, can take. Um, there is... Um, a probability function for toilet flushes in the day. And each of these uh, appliances can be connected to a probability function for, uh, for use. Um, and for specific machines, like I, always, I, I was already talking about the washing machine, you can 
uh, identify these different uh, patterns of, uh, uh, of of water use. So there is a, a water use at the at the first start of the the program, and there are some uh, some flush uh, uh, programs within the washing machine. I think it takes uh, four times uh, water until uh, the program is fully completed. Now, with all these probability functions, there will be also probability functions for um, yeah, the household uh, in uh, for the number of people in the household. Um, you can predict what we call here the simulated uh, diurnal flow pattern of uh, of a single home, and I will show a little bit more into detail in the next uh, couple of slides. So it starts again with household uh, statistics. Here on the top level, um, we distinguish a one-person uh, household. And for that one person household, um, uh, there is a, uh, more statistics. It's looking at the percentage of adult people and, and senior people. Uh, and senior is uh, 65 uh, plus uh, of age. Um, it looks at uh, average uh, distribution of uh, uh, male and female persons uh, in, uh, in the one person household. Um, it looks at how much uh, percent, uh, what percentage of uh, people uh, will work uh, more than 20 hours per week. Um, and similar statistics will be there for a two person household uh, with no kids. And uh, uh, there is a, a statistics for families uh, with uh, children. Um, and um, yeah, with all these statistics, and of course the statistics can be optimized uh, to uh, to the area you're uh, you're working uh, with. Uh, these are the standard statistics you show I show here on the screen, which are used by Simdim. But uh, as I said, you can uh, modify that and update that to uh, more accurate uh, data if you are uh, working for a specific uh, target area for your uh, your modeling. Um, and then there are the what we call the so the, the so-called stats uh, files, um, where uh, we can give the information about um, uh, the the different appliances. You see, for instance, here on the left-hand side, uh, a shower, where we have uh, a table of frequency of use uh, of of the shower. We can also see this uh, curve here, which gives us uh, a probability function with the likelihood uh, for the time of the day that the showers are taken. And what you can see here, which is quite obvious, is that the peak in showering will be in the morning or in the evening. Uh, and during the day and during the night, of course, no, there will be no, not many people who take uh, the shower. And we can also uh, look at uh, some some um, yeah background information subtypes uh, where the hot water is uh, coming from, for instance. And what this system does, it it not only looks at the water demand, but it also distinguishes between uh, cold and uh, hot uh, water. So you can make a selection of the temperatures of the cold and hot water, and it mixes them, of course, into a temperature which is nice for uh, showering, uh, in this case, 38 degrees. Now, a similar approach is done for, uh, in this case, uh, a dishwasher. You see here that uh, the likelihood of using a dishwasher is, uh, of course, after uh, the, the dinner time at six, and, and some people will wait until the evening. They will t take a few drinks and they start the machine later on in the evening. So there are two uh, distinct peaks, peaks during the day when uh, a washing machine, a dishwasher is used, and uh, again, you can see that there are, in this case, three, uh, three or four uh, water intakes uh, of the program of that, uh, that dishwasher. Now, it's all going very quickly. There are more of these uh, statistics uh, files, and you can update them uh, according to what you uh, uh, what what is what is like. But there are a number of these standard uh, uh, files built in. Uh, and um, yeah, as I said, uh, tweaking may be necessary for uh, specific uh, cases. Now, once we have that, um, then we can run uh, a Monte Carlo simulation. Um, we can run uh, these uh, patterns uh, with a random generator uh, using uh, all the uh, statistics uh, data which are in there using a stochastic uh, process. And we can predict uh, water demands per household for weekdays, for weekend days, so the system can make the distinction between weekdays and weekend days. Uh, we can predict uh, hot and cold flow uh, for waters, and uh, we actually know where the flow is coming from and what appliance or tap uh, is used in each occasion. And then you get a pattern which you see here. This is 24 hours during the day. You see here the flow rate, and this is for one household. Um, and you can see uh, the black 
spikes here are every time that a tap or an appliance is used, you see a spike in, in flow. Uh, and the red ones are the, the, the warm water taps uh, which are used. And with this, um, because you know which tap is used um, and which temperature is there, um, you can connect these spikes also to uh, a water quality. And um, as, see, as you see here on the left hand side, this is a special viewer. Um, you can, uh, this is the total flow, but you can also select the different taps uh, which are used uh, here. And uh, you can see uh, that you can select uh, seven days a week, uh, so seven demand patterns uh, of the different days in a week. And then, of course, you can simulate a whole range of weeks uh, after each other. So you can easily make three, four, five hundred of these patterns in uh, in a few minutes of time uh, for uh, for a specific uh, household in, uh, in in an area. Now, because we know what type of uh, appliance is used, we can uh, use this SIMDM wastewater uh, post uh, processor to connect uh, uh, water quality uh, uh, data to, uh, to the discharges, which can be things like suspended solids, COD, nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, the standard uh, wastewater uh, parameters. But we also can add other things. Um, and there is sufficient space in the data structure to add things like pharmaceuticals. We can add um, uh, virus uh, discharge uh, rates, uh, something which is very actual now with, uh, with the COVID. Um, and actually, um, we can also update uh, temperatures uh, because sometimes um, when you look at the demand uh, uh, the side temperature, um, the temperature will be sometimes a bit higher than uh, when it goes into, uh, into the sewer. For instance, if you take a shower, um, uh, the water will be uh, 38 uh, degrees, but when uh, it goes down uh, the, the sink uh, in, in your shower, it will already have been cooled uh, a few, uh, few degrees and you can take that into account uh, using uh, SIMDAME uh, wastewater. And as I said and earlier, um, you can integrate this uh, time delay uh, in, uh, in the data uh, between the water use and the actual discharge uh, time. Now, this provides us then with a time series, um, like I've showed you here, these time series, they can be used then to feed into a, a hydraulic sewer model, um, which is actually a network. Uh, it, it models a network in, the, in terms of, uh, of nodes uh, and, uh, and conduits. Um, and for each of the house connections, we can uh, uh, use one of these uh, unique stochastic uh, discharge patterns to feed into the model uh, with water quality, with temperature and uh, with, uh, with flow data, of course. And then the model use, uh, uses open channel uh, flow uh, hydraulics, uh, the, 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 the important uh, St. Venant uh, equations. Uh, to solve that uh, system. And yeah, in this case, uh, there's an outfall here where it connects to uh, a bigger sewer. It, uh, it, it uh, uh, um, accumulates all the water for, wastewater from this, uh, this area. Um, and uh, it, uh, uh, you can calculate uh, all, uh, all the data. So this is a little bit about um, the theory, the, the way the modeling is done. And what I want to do now is show you a few um, uh, data and, and results, uh, what we have achieved uh, with, uh, with this. And the first thing I would like to uh, show you is about uh, uh, heat uh, recovery. That's where it started. And uh, I will focus here on uh, heat recovery in uh, street uh, sewers. And, um, yeah, if you look at this, uh, these systems, um, they are uh, the, the heat exchanges for these uh, heat uh, systems, heat recovery systems. They are just on the market. You can buy them. Uh, you see some examples here. These are uh, used for installing uh, in uh, already existing uh, sewer systems. Uh, these are new ones where you see this uh, the scale, uh, this stainless steel uh, scale at the bottom, which is used as the heat exchange uh, surface, is already integrated in the sewer mains. There are other systems where there's a coil uh, around uh, the, the sewer uh, mains, and this is another system which is, can also be used to install in uh, already existing uh, sewer systems. So you can buy them on the market, and the question is, of course, where do you want to install these uh, systems and where is the optimum position in the network to, uh, to use these uh, things? And of course, uh, if you put them in, uh, in the sewer system, how much energy can you actually uh, recover from it? 
and we started our work uh, in, uh, I think it was 2014, a little bit before that. Um, and there was a publication at the time um, by uh, a group uh, from uh, EAWAG in, uh, in Switzerland, uh, David uh, Duremat and Oscar Wanner. Uh, they published already before 2014, I think it was 2008 already, their first uh, publication. Uh, looking at uh, um, yeah all the uh, processes involved in heat exchange uh, in uh, in the sewer system, they were looking at uh, evaporation, at convective transport of the heat uh, through the through the water, uh, conductive uh, uh, transport of the heat through the wall of the pipe into the soil, uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, they were looking at mist uh, formation, all processes which were involved in in heat. Uh, they included in the model and that made the model uh, very accurate and also very slow. Um, and therefore we did uh, a sensitivity analysis and from our sensitivity analysis we concluded that uh, only heat transfer between uh, the wastewater, the pipe wall, uh, wall and the soil were important and of course the convective uh, uh, transport with the water itself. And that, uh, with that, we, uh, we used uh, the equations to have a simplified model, which was implemented in the Sobek suite, where we could actually not only simulate uh, the temperature in the sewer, but also include uh, the, the, the heat loss uh, uh, through uh, the, uh, uh, the, the pipe wall into the surrounding soil. And because if you take warm water into a sewer pipe, if you go 100 meters or 200 meters down uh, uh, downstream, uh, you will have lost uh, some of the energy just because it leaks away into uh, into the soil where this uh, this conduit is, uh, is is positioned. And um, yeah, we use this uh, this method uh, to uh, to simulate uh, a case study in Amsterdam. Uh, the, you see a, 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 an aerial view here. This is a street where we were. Um, uh, modeling um, and uh, the red dots uh, are the manholes of the sewer system. Um, it was about 136 uh, apartments and, and 97 house connections. Um, and uh, yeah, we expected about 20, uh, uh, to, uh, 0 0.25 liters per second uh, uh, on average uh, wastewater in this uh, system. And what we did here is we inserted uh, what we call um, um, uh, this, this, this type of, of uh, optic fiber, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a DTS, a distributed temperature sensor. That was the word, the word I'm looking for. Um, so we inserted this cable uh, in the sewer system, and you can, with that cable, you can measure temperatures in, in the sewer or in the wastewater in the sewer uh, through time. This is a time axis and for uh, the whole length of the cable. So we, uh, if I go back uh, here, uh, we inserted the cable from this point all the way down to this point and from this point where the, uh, the, uh, the, the center point of the, uh, the pipe all the way down to this end of the, of the pipe. So if you go back here, here so this is the, the bottom section, this is the central point and here is uh, the, uh, the top section, the previous one. And what you see here is that there is a very dynamic pattern. The color indicates uh, the temperature and we see actually uh, all of these uh, different uh, red colors here are um, yeah, uh, discharges of warm water of around 25 or even uh, above 25 degrees uh, uh, from, uh, from the houses. During the night, this is the night time, uh, so before between let's say 2 and 8, you see that the temperature is quite cool, uh, there's no hot discharge, and here in the morning it starts at this point. And also what you see is that the warm water here will slowly move towards the center here. So these bands of red uh, will uh, move down uh, the drain, uh, uh, move down uh, the, the sewer pipe. And um, with this, we could actually confirm uh, what we uh, were expecting about uh, the, the heat uh, in, uh, in the sewers. Now, Let's take the step now to uh, to the UK. This is uh, our campus uh, in uh, in Bath, um, and you see here some of the student accommodation. This is the map, and this is where the student accommodation is. They, those who are familiar with our campus, this is near uh, the East uh, Car Park, uh, the Quads. And the good thing about the quads is that um, our estates uh, department has installed uh, water meters for cold and warm water in these uh, 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 
areas. Um, they use it uh, with a high frequency monitoring uh, data so that the uh, students can see actually on, uh, on the screen and the, in the halls uh, of these uh, buildings how much water and how much energy they, uh, they are using. So very interesting, but they also they do the data logging and we could use that, of course, to, um, yeah, for uh, a good, uh, yeah, validation of, of our model. Now, what we did, uh, and this is uh, the flow pattern, this is actually measured uh, data uh, for the water demand. Uh, and you can see there's a very high sharp peak in the morning at eight. Uh, that's when all the students are going into the shower before they go to, uh, to the lecture theaters. Um, and we did uh, uh, temperature measurements uh, here like this. Uh, we, we installed in the manhole a, a temperature sensor, which we could uh, monitor as well. And um, we started to model these uh, systems uh, first with only the mains. Uh, we expanded it with some laterals, uh, then with uh, some more laterals. And finally, we came to this uh, more complicated uh, um, uh, network with uh, a few laterals and, and, and house connection. Actually, what you see here is a bit small, but it is that um, the, uh, the blue line here at the back is the temperature we simulated with uh, our model, and the orange line is the temperature we measured. And actually, what you see here is that there is a good agreement with, uh, uh, with uh, what we can, uh, can model in, in, in terms of temperature. And with this temperature flow and the flow uh, rate uh, of the water, we can actually calculate what's the, uh, the thermal power available in, uh, in, uh, in the wastewater. And in this case, it was about uh, 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 something like uh, 2000 megajoules per week, uh, which was available. But what you also see is that there is a very strong uh, dynamics in, uh, uh, in, in the available power. And that means that if you want to use this power, you actually need uh, storage uh, for, uh, for this energy to, uh, to make it, uh, to, to, to have a useful uh, use for this, uh, um, this, this energy. Now, similar things we did in, uh, back in the Netherlands. This is a larger uh, residential area. Watch this uh, curved space here because that's important uh, uh, for uh, recognizing it in the maps. It's an area here just outside of, uh, of Amsterdam, uh, city of Almere, and uh, this is the, the area we are uh, looking uh, at. Um, and this is the network in this, uh, this area. It's about 5,000 uh, people equivalent. And um, yeah, I think there are a number of spots here, one, two, three, and four, where we did simulations uh, for. And again, this curved area, this curved street is what you see here on this, uh, this side. This is this uh, street, uh, so to recognize where you are. And this area here at the back, which is not included, that's um, uh, a more commercial area, which is here at the south of this uh, um, uh, urban area. And what we did here is simulate the flow rate. Again, you see the diurnal pattern. So it's for every house connection here in this uh, area, 5,000 uh, people equivalent, I think something like uh, 2,000 homes. Uh, we developed uh, SIMDM patterns and all these SIMDM patterns were fed into the, the network model. And that gives you, all if you add them all up, this uh, flow rate for the different uh, places. Uh, so one is very upstream in the, in the catchment, uh, which gives you a very low flow. It's almost uh, uh, unrecognizable here at the bottom. Two is a little bit higher that uh, collects already more water. Three is here at this point, almost uh, uh, it collects most of this uh, left area. And four is the outfall of the system, which collects uh, the 5,000 people equivalent of the whole, uh, whole system. And again, we could uh, simulate uh, temperatures uh, here. And what we did here is looking at different seasons. So you see here the summertime, the spring, autumn, and in the winter time. And um, yeah, there are slight differences uh, because there will be uh, in the winter, the, the soil will be colder. And that means that there's uh, a higher heat loss uh, in, uh, in the soil, in the pipes, uh, but still temperatures of around 20 to 25, even in winter time in the sewer were uh, predicted. And actually that's what you can also, also can measure in the system. Now, if you look at this system again, uh, looking at uh, temperatures, um, then, um, uh, or at, at thermal power, well, at uh, the, the, the high upfield, uh, um, uh, there's only very little power. 
if you go for the 5,000 people equivalent, you can go up to, well, let's say 30 or 40 uh, kilowatts uh, uh, of, uh, of heat uh, capacity. I will not uh, go into the details of these two different lines because of time uh, for now. And this is just in, uh, increasing it. Now, um, what is important is, of course, in these types of, of modeling is that um, uh, the, the data you get out of these models are uh, as accurate as uh, uh, the, the data you put into uh, to them. And there are differences, of course. And one of the differences is, for instance, in, in the water use. Uh, so much of the, uh, the predictions we did uh, in the UK uh, data were done with uh, Dutch uh, water use uh, data in the first place. And there are differences. Uh, for instance, if you look at here, the, the water use data, these are the different uh, uh, appliances or, or water uses in the house, going from a bath, bathroom, shower, all the way to external use, uh, here the dark gray area. You see that mostly in, uh, let's say, the bathing culture in the UK in the UK and the Netherlands, there are the differences. Um, where the Dutch, most of the people in, in the Netherlands use uh, uh, showers and only very little uh, people uh, actually use uh, baths. Uh, you see that in, in, uh, in the UK, the use of the bath is much more uh, pronounced uh, available and, and less use of showers uh, in, in percentage uh, of, uh, of water use. Um, so yeah, there are differences. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's cultural uh, related, uh, basically. And for this, um, yeah, I think we tested that uh, a few years ago with uh, one of my PhDs uh, in Bath, uh, Olivia Bailey from the YCDT. She did some modeling uh, on uh, this, uh, these two catchments in the first place, um, where we had metered uh, data. We had a catchment A uh, here and a catchment B on this uh, side where we had different uh, metered uh, data, so we could actually calibrate uh, flows and things like that. And uh, there was uh, also data from the outfall. There was a flow meter here at the outfall of the two catchments, uh, which we could actually use to, uh, to validate uh, our modeling uh, system. And um, yeah, normally when you do these modeling, you take some kind of a diurnal pattern, uh, continuous flow, and uh, that's what is used for uh, dimensioning uh, the system. Um, but we did it in a stochastic uh, way, and you see that there, the, the levels uh, are uh, similar. Uh, so we predict uh, our flow rates in a similar uh, rate. There are some distinctions here at uh, during the day that the flow will be lower than uh, what is normally done in, in the design. And um, yeah, if you then compare the data uh, from the flow meter with the actual uh, uh, results, and I think it's perhaps a bit difficult to, to, uh, to see, but if you take the, the solid black line here is uh, what we predict with our uh, model. Uh, you see the, the five days in a week uh, here. And the two gray lines, there are two gray lines uh, here, which actually, well, it, it tells us the confidence inf interval. I think it's, it's more like a 95% uh, observation uh, interval. So we had uh, a number of months uh, of data from this uh, outfall flow meter. And 95% um, uh, of the observations uh, of that flow meter fall within these two, uh, two lines. And what you see here is that, uh, yeah, our predictions uh, are right in the middle, spot on uh, between these uh, two uh, gray lines. There are, of course, a few ex uh, the, uh, um, differences here. For instance, um, our model predicts that there is a higher water demand uh, later in the evening, um, but basically, roughly seen, our model predicts uh, the, uh, uh, the water use uh, or the discharges in this area uh, quite well. And from there on, we started to do some modeling. We uh, coupled uh, um, sewage water qualities uh, from uh, uh, different appliances in this area. And we also did some uh, uh, scenarios, calculating some scenarios for the current ambition. These were, uh, this was a project which was uh, uh, done by Artesia Consulting on behalf of Offward in 2018, looking at different uh, water use or water saving scenarios. And we were actually interested in what these water saving scenarios would do with the sewage water quality. So for each appliance, we used a load, so a number of grams of COD, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, or suspended solids 
per use of the tap. And um, we also added some temperature data to, uh, to that. And um, yeah, then we can simulate uh, discharge patterns. Again, for one household here, we see a flow pattern uh, coming straight from SimDM, but we also could uh, look at the COD uh, discharge of the household. We could predict the phosphorus uh, discharge of the household um, with the different uh, taps. And what you see here in the next slide is that um, at the solid line is the baseline scenario. That's our current use that all of these uh, um, yeah, improved uh, 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 low uh, water saving scenarios um, show that uh, concentrations are increasing. So these are cumulative plots of the uh, concentration. So you see the concentration here, and this is the cumulative frequency of, uh, of these models. And you see that the concentration all goes up to higher values. And this is for COD, uh, again here for uh, nitrogen, phosphorus goes up and temperature goes the other way around. So uh, for some reason, um, the temperature is, uh, is decreasing when you are saving water. And I think that's logical because if you are saving water, you probably will shower less, uh, you will use the bath less, and that means that uh, there is less warm water use, uh, and that means that the, uh, the average temperature will uh, go down in the sewer. And to confirm everything what we did, and I have to look at the time I see, um, is that uh, and we did similar things in, in Amsterdam, uh, where we had a, a, a small island uh, here in Amsterdam called Prinsen Island, uh, in the, in the, near the city center with the canals around it, a small island uh, with only uh, four streets going around like this and the fifth street uh, here in the middle, collecting all the wastewater in a, uh, in a combined sewer. Uh, there's a pumping station here which pumps the water uh, then to the next uh, section in, uh, on, the, uh, on the other island. And we could install sample equipment uh, here. We installed one of these, uh, well, uh, portable toilets, but that was not used as a portable toilet, but it uh, contained our uh, auto sampler uh, here. And we could take actual water quality samples from uh, this uh, pumping station here. And um, yeah, what you see here on the top is uh, the prediction of the water flow uh, in this, uh, this area. Also with uh, the great uh, area, um, the, the actual uh, measurements. And again, you see that our uh, prediction is very close to uh, what we actually measured uh, here in the, in the system. There are a few variations here during the day where uh, we are under predicting the flow, but not, uh, not too big. Um, and um, yeah, we could actually predict uh, loads uh, in this uh, pumping station for uh, COD, total uh, uh, Keldon nitrogen and, and phosphorus, which are again um, uh, uh, validated with the measurements we took. And you can see that the loads we predicted are very well uh, and very close to the observed uh, mass loads uh, in these area. The dots are the measurements and the lines are what we have uh, predicted. And what we are doing at the moment here with this uh, same uh, area is where we are looking at uh, how we can use these models for, uh, for instance, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, spreading. And you see here some viral load uh, data and now the predictions are a little bit longer than uh, the five days uh, or the seven days here. We're now looking at 28 days. And this is just one family in the area of uh, 400 houses uh, there, which uh, is uh, shedding the virus. I think we're looking here at 10 uh, uh, people. And in this case, it's, it's 23 uh, of, uh, of the population or so. But we're still looking at these data. So um, uh, it, it can be that this, uh, this is not fully validated yet. And um, yeah, uh, it, it, it needs uh, further uh, in investigation. And then finally, um, what I would like to show you is some work we're doing at the moment uh, for uh, our next gen uh, project where uh, um, YTL and Wessex, uh, the, the, the parent company of uh, Wessex Water as well, uh, are developing a new housing area in uh, the Filton airfield near, near Bristol. And the first residential area you see that they are building or actually have built uh, there is this uh, area near, uh, which is called, I think, the Spitfire uh, uh, area. With a few houses, um, uh, uh, there is some social housing here at the top. Uh, there are uh, two, three and four bedroom uh, houses. There is an apartment block with a number of streets. Uh, and different uh, uh, occupations and bedroom uh, breakdown. And we have used this 
to um, uh, to use uh, uh, again with some DM to uh, try to predict uh, uh, heat uh, recovery and, uh, and nutrient recovery from these uh, systems. But what is interesting in this uh, place is that we have used now uh, a data set uh, from uh, a public data set from uh, Oxford uh, University um, where they have uh, investigated uh, the time use uh, of uh, people uh, in, in uh, the UK. And we can now actually update uh, the, uh, the SIMDM predictions to the actual uh, time use, how it is measured in, uh, in the UK. You see a number of these uh, graphs here. These are the uh, fraction of the people sleeping. Of course, during the day, uh, people don't sleep. Um, these are, I think, uh, the fraction of people uh, away from home for work. Um, so these are important uh, uh, statistics which we can feed into uh, SIMDM and improve our accuracy uh, of, uh, of the predictions. And you see some of the, the water demand predictions of that uh, Spitfire area here. We have done some uh, heat uh, recovery potential. Uh, and again, you see that there is a very strong dynamic pattern. And during the day in this area, there's not much heat. So again, for uh, heat uh, recovery, uh, storage is, is, uh, is required to make it effective. And um, we've been looking at, for instance, phosphorus uh, uh, concentrations in the wastewater under uh, normal appliances and with water saving appliances. And you can see here that, um, yeah, for uh, uh, saving appliances, the average concentration increases a, a little bit in these uh, uh, um, in these uh, wastewater uh, systems. So we can actually predict um, water quality very well uh, in these systems. And this brings me actually now to my last slide. And I think time is also uh, uh, almost up. Um, and so what I've tried to show you is that this uh, stochastic modeling uh, yeah, actually can give you very accurate uh, simulations of water flow and uh, water quality in sewers. And um, there are a number of, of yeah, very uh, big applications for this. And um, uh, things like water saving scenarios can be uh, uh, um, investigated. Uh, heat recovery, I've shown you. Uh, disease spreading like with COVID, but also other uh, parameters uh, can be used. We can perhaps use it for uh, uh, combining it with pharmaceuticals uh, tracking uh, in, in our sewer, sewer system. And actually, if you look at the outlook of this, um, I think um, and this, this tracking of pathogen movement is an important thing to, to do. Um, but also, if we could combine these systems, I started with um, uh, that uh, we were looking at only uh, dry weather flow uh, here. But actually, these hydraulic systems can be combined easily with, uh, with rainfall uh, models. And uh, then we can actually predict uh, water quality in, uh, in combined sewer overflows uh, with these uh, types of systems. Um, and I think one of the important things to uh, to go for is, is improve further uh, the data to improve our accuracy. And um, yeah, more a technical aspect is that we need a better integration of the three parts of the modeling system. So the SIMDM, the SIMDM wastewater and uh, the hydraulic model in the end to make uh, yeah uh, using the models a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, I think this was my last slide. So thank you very much. I will stop sharing my screen and I'm happy to uh, answer a few questions if, uh, if there's time for it.